Welcome, Dave Ritzko, Transtar's technical part specialist. And today we're going to talk about a 5R110W. I know it's already moved along in history, the six speeds are coming out past it, but there's still a lot of trucks with it, and there's a lot of trucks that haven't been touched yet. Now, when the 5R110 goes together at the factory, it's married to the engine, all the grounds are real nice and everything, and it's a happy marriage until a divorce happens. And what do I mean by divorce? When a transmission gets burned up or has an issue and you have to remove it from the engine, at that point, you cause a divorce. And again, most of them aren't friendly, but here's the thing, when you build it, you go through it, all the confidence level, you put it back together, you fire it up, bam, blows the pump. Uh, you go on a short test drive, bam, blows the pump. It'll blow the pump at any given reason, and there's a few reasons for it. Probably the biggest reason is a ground issue. And you will tell that on a ground issue because you have now, like I say, you separated. You broke the nice connection it had. There'll be tracer electrical tracks. There's been a lot of seminars on it. It's been talked about just about everywhere. So again, when you go to do these, please, please, please clean the factory grounds, even if they look good. Remove them. It usually goes from the engine to the frame. It's never a bad idea. Matter of fact, it's never a bad idea on any unit to absolutely check the grounds. And one thing you do not want to do, and it's a bad news on anyone as far as I'm concerned, is try to add a ground strap from the transmission to the frame. You've increased the likelihood of electric going through the front pump into the transmission through the case to ground to the frame. Again, bad news. So let's talk about other issues that can cause a pump damage right away. One of them is this transmission is a very thirsty transmission. Now, probably one of the regular ways of filling up a transmission is you dump four quarts in, five quarts, you start the vehicle, you run around to the front, and you add more fluid as it's run so it keeps pumping through. Well, if you've been getting away with that on 5R110s, you, one of them is going to bite you. This transmission, I recommend, and you can do whatever you want, but dump about eight quarts of fluid, fire the engine up, let it run about four, five seconds, kill the engine, turn it off. Now, if you know how much it holds 16 quarts, dump another eight quarts in it, fire it up, then let it go through. You definitely do not want this sump to run dry. If you do, You'll be pulling it back out, changing the pump and the converter because it eats them both up. Not to mention other damage it could do by throwing metal in so you're going through it again. Again, grounds, please do the grounds. I recommend cleaning, replacing the factory grounds. Adding one from a starter bolt to the frame, probably not a bad idea, but again, if you clean your factory grounds, just live forever that way, do it that way. Two, make sure this thing has a ton of fluid in it. Eight quarts, fire it up, couple seconds, turn it off, and you'll be amazed how fast it sucks that fluid up. Then put in the rest or whatever amount and then go from there for final top off. The last one I wanna talk about is pump alignment. Now, since the old days, there's been ways to align the pumps. You put the pumps together, you pull them together, you put the bolts in it, and you take one of these nice round bands you put it on. They used to have this, have to have four or five sizes for the different pumps, little Chrysler, you had the GM style, you had the bigger one for the Ford. Then they came out with this nice one, easily adjustable to any size. Open it, clip it on, you just move this. Nice tools to have, do not get rid of them. They're still used on plenty of units. But on a 5R110, if anybody remembers A4LD, aligning the pump, if the bushing was good in the bell housing, 
you did not change it, you ran it. If you changed it, you could run into problems, eating the converter hub, wearing the bushing out, eating the gears up, eating the pump up. Well, let me explain to you of why that may happen. When Ford, GM, Chrysler, and such, if it's a Teflon bushing, you won't have the issue. If it's a bronze or a Babbitt bushing, absolutely could have it. When they make this pump, that hole is somewhat center. If it's a Teflon bushing, it's center. If it's a regular bushing, it's somewhat center. And let me explain that. OEs put in an unfinished bushing. And in other words, it's real thick wall. The average pump bushing wall or bushing wall is around 61 thousandths. They will have one around 70 thousandths thick, 65 thick, something. It's not finished. So when you have a hole a little bit off center, they can go in and line bore it dead center, dead center. Now, when you take the bushing out to replace it and you go in with an aftermarket bushing, you've taken that center and I'm doing this and that's quite a bit, but what basically to get the thing, you have pulled out a bushing that was centered, you put in an aftermarket bushing, you move that center. A good practice to get into on any bushing, but mainly on pump bushings is when you press I like to use the word press. Now, sometimes you can't use one, but for the most of them you can. When you press that bushing off, out, take a mic and go around it. It should be somewhat even all the way around it. If you pull it out and it's thicker on one side than the other, without really substantial wear or something, it come out. You now have to really watch yourself because the bushing you're gonna put in is going to move the center line. What does that do? That moves your hub against the side, which puts a load on your gears, and crunch, crunch it goes. It don't like that. So again, always kind of try to check the bushing you pull out. And again, if it's somewhat even all the way around, if it's 63 on one side and 59 on the other, that's to the far end of the scale. Trust me, it's almost a better thing to just put a new pump in or put a bushing in, take it to a machine shop and have them line bore it. But there's different ways of doing it. And I mentioned A4LD for a particular reason, because Ford, you couldn't really use the bands on them. You could use guide pins that get you close, but close ain't real good when you're talking about a front pump bushing. So they had tools like these that are sleeves. And what they do is when you put this together and you have the pump on, on top of the stator, what you're using now is you find the one that fits. Now you push it in. What you've done is that stator shaft is center can't be nothing but center. There's no line boring that stator shaft. So that center, that gives you a center point. Now you take that sleeve, put it over, you've centered the pump to this. You're centered. You may be off to where if you're using one of these tools, it's moving it, but it feels nice and smooth around. And again, we're talking thousands. That's the clearance. So when you put this in, you're essentially taking the center and centering your pump to the center. Sounds funny, but that's the way it is. And also, this is Transgo's kit, and it's the 5R1-pump-align. So again, it's not a bad tool to get. It, it can save you. The cost of this tool is nowhere compared to the cost you're going to pay if you have one of these pump gears explode on you. And they also give you a couple nice guide pins. But the main focus is this sleeve, similar to the old days with the A4LD 4R44 series, where it really was the only way to align it. Again, guys, 5R110, grounds, 
feed it all the fluid you can get it, and please make your pump aligned properly. Hope it saves somebody down the road. Thanks for watching.